Hi and welcome to the Unquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and in this video I continue to work on the neck for my Weston Pantera X390 tribute build. In previous videos I made a whole bunch of templates for this guitar build and I started working on this neck so if you haven't been following along there is a playlist available uh, on my channel with the entire guitar build up until this point so without further ado let's continue to work on this neck. So I've drawn in the side profile of this neck and I tried to record it but I really had to think about what I was doing and translating it into English became a big disaster so uh, the footage became unusable uh, unfortunately so I have to explain you what I did uh, right now of course I started with drawing in the thickness overall thickness of the neck by first marking where the first and 12th fret are going to be and marked the thickness I want to have in my case 21 millimeters at the first fret and 23 millimeters at the 12th fret these aren't the final dimensions I always tend to keep it one or two millimeters thicker so I have some margin uh, of error uh, to play with next what I did I determined the thickness uh, of the heel I always like to have about 10 millimeters underneath the heel of the neck uh, for body material and I know my body is going to be about 40 millimeters thick so uh, as a preliminary uh, heel thickness I've drawn in a, a heel of 30 millimeters thick and marked at the underside uh, the profile of the body to heel transition so I could determine the curvature for the actual body to heel transition which is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of this line but again to give me some margin of error and to really be able to blend the body into the neck or the other way around to blend the uh, heel transition into the body perfectly I'm going to use this line uh, to cut out the side profile for now so this gives me some extra material to play with uh, once I'm going to carve uh, the uh, heel transition into the body next I've drawn in the headstock thickness of about 15 millimeters and determined the volute and yeah I like the highest point of the volute to be in the center of the nut and uh, for this curvature I like to use the same diameter as this sanding drum because I'm going to use my spindle sander and this sanding drum to finalize the headstock thickness so while using this drum and have this as the same diameter I can also use this to sand and shape the back of the volute in one go the radius on the other side I always eyeball this to find a shape I really like to find a curvature I really like at this point so with the side profile marked I can take it to the bandsaw and cut out the rough shape of this neck Now that the neck is rough sawn, uh, I can use my spindle sander trick to get the headstock to the final thickness and start shaping the back of the volute. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to use my Shinto rasp and make sure that the back of this neck is nice and flat and dead straight before I can start carving the neck profile itself. I've stuck the headstock to a piece of multiply so this gives me a nice surface to use my spindle sander trick and sand the headstock to the correct thickness.
Now with the back of the neck very smooth and perfectly flat and straight I can start carving the neck and this neck is going to get a C shape and in order to get a nice and consistent C shape I'm going to facet the neck according to uh, this diagram right here. Off camera I already divided the neck in four sections, they're equal sections and I drawn in a center line and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure from the center line to the edge of the neck. I'm going to mark the exact center line or the center right here and take this measurement and also draw it in here on the side and this gives me a 45 degree angle. I'm going to do this on each line on both sides of the neck and then I'm going to use my Shinto rasp and some Iwasaki carving files to create that 45 degree bevel or facet on either side of the neck. Now with the first facet on each side of the neck done, I can create a second face by reconnecting these division lines on the side of the neck, find the center of the face I just made and again find the center in between the center line on the back of the neck and this edge of the 45 degree angle I just made and then create a secondary uh, face uh, or a secondary facet on each side of the neck. So and with both facets in on either side of the neck once more, I'm going to do the same, divide this new face in half, divide the remainder of the face on the back of the neck uh, in half once more in between the center line and this edge right here. Join these up for the third and final facet and then I can take a file and some sandpaper and round over the entire neck and get close to the final shape of this neck.
Now that the basic shape of the neck profile is done, I can continue to work on the volute. And fairly easy, I'm just going to draw in a shape of the volute I like. And it has to fit with the curves of the headstock, of course. And then use some rasps and files and start carving the volute. Make, taking good care not to damage uh, the finished section, of course, of the back of the neck. At this point I'm very happy how the neck profile turned out. It's nice and comfortable and of course I have a lovely big volute. I really like volutes on my neck. It makes them really sturdy and, and, and very comfortable to play. And yeah, at this point I'm going to put this neck aside for a couple of days. And that's because uh, I removed a lot of wood on the back from the back of this neck and any tension that might have been present in the neck blank and now has the chance to release itself so there might be a slight copping bowing or, 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 or a slight movement possible in this neck and by letting it rest for just a couple of days I can see how much it moves if it moves at all and any slight bowing or copping that might, uh, might occur I can uh, correct by or adjusting the truss rod or by uh, sending in the radius. Unfortunately, due to some unforeseen and personal circumstances, I have to end this episode right here. And yeah, I really wanted to upload this part of the episode at least, and hopefully, in the next episode, I can get back to the 12 fret inlay, uh, do the fret marker dots, radius the fretboard and install some frets. So yeah, I hope to see you all in the next episode. Uh, because of the irregular upload schedule uh, at the moment, yeah, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and you've got your notification bell uh, turned on so you get notified when I upload something new. So yeah, as always, I hope to see you all there, but until then, have a nice week.